On behalf of the Washburn University Board of Regents, the faculty, administration, and staff, I welcome you to this commencement at Washburn University's 153rd year. And now, please stand and join members of the Washburn Singers under the direction of Dr. Kevin Kellum in the singing of our national anthem. I want to thank Dr. Kellum, who conducted the choir. The music department is such an important part of Washburn, and we are so pleased members of the Washburn Singers are here with us today. Please let's give them another round of applause. Also, please join me in expressing thanks to Mrs. Norma Pettijohn, our organist, and the Washburn Faculty Brass Quintet for providing the music today. I would like to direct your attention to the international flag surrounding the commencement platform. In recognizing Washburn, Washburn University's impact locally, nationally, and globally, the flags that have been posted represent the countries of the world which have had students attend Washburn. These countries are represented by the flags above the commencement platform. Flags along the side of the podium represent countries which currently have students attending Washburn. And now, Mr. Scott Weinkoff, incoming president of the Washburn Student Government Association, will introduce the platform party. Today is the day you finally receive the most expensive piece of paper you'll ever buy. <laughs> to the naked eye, the only difference is a name on the degree. I know that is not true. Each and every diploma they hand out today tells a different story, your story. Uh, the late nights and early mornings, the good grades and the not so good grades, the times we succeeded and the lessons we've learned, the friends we've made, our growth as individuals, and all the things we have overcome. While each story is unique, there's one thing all of our stories share. We did it. We did it. Uh, now, oh, turned the wrong page. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce the platform party. Please stand as I call your name and remain standing until all are introduced. Dr. Marion Jamerson, pr professor and dean uh, from the School of Nursing, is our grand marshal. Uh, Dr. Eric Grospich, vice president for student life. Dr. Dr. Richard Lickey, uh, exec executive director, enrollment management. Mr. Marshall Meek, president, Washburn University Foundation. Dr. David Price, Associate Professor, School of Business. Dr. Jane Carpenter, Assistant Professor, School of Nursing. Ms. Cynthia Holthouse, Special Assistant to the President. 
Dr. Pam Foster, Equal Opportunities Director, Mr. Mark Freed, University Council, Mr. Mike Mustang, President of the Washburn University Alumni Association Board of Directors, Dr. David Sollers, Dean, School of Business, Dr. Monica Scheibmeyer, Dean, School of Nursing, Dr. Pat Munzer, Dean, School of Applied Studies, Dr. Laura Stephenson, Dean, College of Arts and Sciences, the Honorable Michelle De La Iza, Mayor of Topeka, Board of Regents, Dr. Julian Mazicek, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Mr. Terry Beck, Board of Regents, Mr. Brett Bowles, Board of Regents, Ms. Blanche Park, Board of Regents, Mr. William Sneed, Board of Regents, Mr. Paul Hoffer, Vice Chair, Board of Regents, Mr. Dell Pon, Honorary Degree Recipient, and of course, Dr. Jerry Farley, President, Washburn University. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the president of Washburn University, Dr. Jerry Farley. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to this grand celebration. This is the time that we get together and celebrate the milestone that you students have accomplished and have passed during your pathway to becoming an educated citizen. You've reached your goal. You will receive your degree. You have earned that degree, and you have also earned the right to be proud of having earned that degree. We want you to celebrate that achievement with your family, your friends, our entire academic community. Now, your success is due in large part to your own efforts. Nonetheless, it is likely you could not have achieved this pinnacle without also having supportive parents, faculty members, friends, and alumni. They have served as mentors and as role models for you. As you now assume more responsibilities as a citizen of our great country, you must assume some of those roles yourself. We all congratulate you on a job well done. You have met the expectations that you set for yourself. You have learned things on your path to becoming a college graduate that will serve you in your careers and in your life. You will use the skills which you have developed in ways that may even be hard for you to imagine today. You have likely overcome a few hurdles and a few challenges here and there. Perhaps you had second thoughts, maybe a little anxiety about your ability to succeed in university but you've mastered solving word problems, mastered an athletic skill. Maybe you completed that science project that was so difficult, and perhaps you finished that one giant paper that was due last week in your major. You have done this yourself. You worked hard. You developed the discipline to succeed. This afternoon, this ceremony is steeped in tradition. The gowns that we wear, the funny little hats that you have on today, the faculty robes and colorful hoods, the ceremonial march into this arena. Perhaps as a member of a Greek organization, you had secret handshakes or oaths of loyalty in, honor, in, in honorary and fraternal organizations. This ceremony joins you with the past. There have been many people who have done these same things for indeed centuries, and it connects you with the future. You will now continue these traditions, but now you must do more. You know, you know that change is inevitable. And you must become a part of a community outside the university where everything is changing very, very quickly. 
Leaving Washburn will create a major change for you, just as it was when you came to Washburn and stopped doing the things that you were doing in high school or in your work You'll face many other changes as you continue on your pathway towards success. Each of us knows that change is inevitable. Sometimes it's welcome change, sometimes not so much. Change occurs every day, sometimes in small, seemingly inconsistent incremental events, and sometimes much more global, radical, and swift. Some of you arrived on the Washburn campus four years ago and had huge changes. Some of you have come since then with equal number of difficult changes. We want you to know that these changes are the new norm. The changes that you will face in the future is what the world will be all about for you. We want you to be prepared. We think that we have helped prepare you. When you join the workforce, a number of years from now, you will look back and realize how much you did actually learn at Washburn University. We are in the midst of change every day. Change races around us. Change swirls around us every day. It's difficult to assess what has been happening. We want you to understand the changes that will occur. There was a chap, I rather like him as an author. I've read several of his books. His name is Thomas Friedman. He published a book called The World is Flat. He's published a new one this last summer called Thank You for Being Late. Now, he then proposes in that book that it's not just change that challenges each of us not just change that increases and intensifies our anxiety. He contends that is the acceleration of change and the resulting rapid flow of ideas that are coming together challenge us and our ability as humans to adapt, to adapt as quickly as change is actually occurring. If you were back 500 years ago, living somewhere here in the United States, certainly not out here on the prairie 500 years ago. But at some point, there were things that were changing all around the world. Things were changing in Europe perhaps more rapidly than they were changing here in this country. Scientific, technological changes. Those changes then flowed out to, away from the cities, out to the countryside. But it took a long time for that to occur. 400 years ago probably looked just about like it did 500 years ago. And those changes took a long time to globally affect people's lives. If you lived in that century, it probably didn't make much difference. But in the 20th century, a lot of things began to change. A lot of things began to occur. Technology was booming. The world became uncomfortably different for a lot of people. And it really then, instead of a century perhaps for change to engulf the war, the world, it took perhaps 20 to 30 years for that to happen. Think with me, turn of the 20th century, rapid introduction of automobiles, aircraft, telegraph, manual typewriter. Anybody know what a manual typewriter is, by the way? Okay, somebody, surely. Uh, mainframe computers, a computer, mainframe computer would fill half of this hall at that time. Today, the time from introduction to broad adoption around the globe is really about five to seven years, according to Mr. Friedman. From that time, for it to move from being a new invention into being ubiquitous around the world, we had to adapt as individuals had to adapt to that change. He also proposes that the change that we can adapt to and that we can move to takes about 10 years for a new idea to really go around the globe and we become comfortable with it. Well, now you can see there's a discontinuity. Five to seven years for 
technology to change, 10 years for us to change and be able to accept it. By the time we get used to a change, it won't even be a current change. It won't be the prevalent current change. We'll have moved on to something else, something different. Mr. Freeman suggests that technological changes have reshaped how people create, how they innovate and collaborate, how they communicate, and even how we think. As an example, he traces what he saw as a major recent technological change that occurred in the last 10 years. This occurred in 2007, a single important change. What was that, do you think? I see you got past test to graduate. Uh, smartphones. How many of you have a smartphone in your pocket right now? I bet most of you do in the audience. I hope they're turned off. Uh, but that was a huge change. And the technology behind that change took a long time, five years maybe, maybe not that long. And then we were in the midst of it before we knew what occurred. Internet users passed the one billion mark in the early part of this 10-year span, 07 to 17. Just to think, just think for a moment, the other major changes which have been swirling around us during this period of time, many of them rooted back in that smartphone. And things were accelerating every day. They included things like all the social networking that was occurred, the many services of Google, the video sharing of YouTube, and Amazon, Amazon's online everything. Think of the power of the change. Think how many things had to come together for things to change that dramatically and that fast. Now, if you think about how things change quickly, you will recognize that there are changes built into everything that we do every day. What if we took a look in 1971 at what Intel was using as their processor, their processor chip, their microchip? It was something called a 4004, and it was the most powerful thing in the late 70s that, the, that was available on the, in the marketplace totally. Now they have new Intel chips that are even faster yet. As a matter of fact, Intel chips now are about 3,500 times faster than they were back in the 1970s. They are about 90,000 times more effective and more efficient. They are, they are more operationally friendly now than things have ever been in the past. What would have happened? What would have happened if we had applied that same technology, that same major change that was occurring, what if we had applied that to the automobile industry? Any of you remember, any remember what a Volkswagen Beetle was? A Volkswagen Bug? What if it had changed at the same rate of power as a microchips did? Well, I'm told by Mr. Friedman that that Beetle would be able to go 300,000 miles an hour. That Beetle would get 2 million gallons, uh, 2 million miles per gallon of gasoline. That beetle would cost 4 cents. And this same, if this same speed were applied to fuel efficiency today, you would fill your automobile up with gas once in your lifetime. That is rapid change. There may be changes that will be that dramatic ahead of us in the future. Now, you may be asking, why is he standing up there telling us this? What does it mean to me? I'm a new graduate. I know all the new things that have been happening. We've been studying what is going on in a dynamic world right now and for the last several years. Well, you have completed a lot of education, an associate's degree, a baccalaureate degree, a master's degree. You know the most current ideas. You know the concepts and theories. And in fact, you have spent most of your adult life so far in this rapidly changing and accelerating world. Isn't this the end of it? Winston Churchill is attributed with saying about 70 years ago after Britain won the Battle of El Alamein, 
Winston Churchill said, this is not the end. Middle of World War II, remember. This is not the end. This is not even the beginning of the end. My point is, you know a lot of things, but this is not the end. And it may not be much of a beginning to the end because there's so many other things that can happen. Your education is not over. And you know what I'm about to say, I imagine. But I want to emphasize this. Your education doesn't end today. Your education will actually never end. The acceleration of change will only continue, and you must learn how to deal with that. You must learn for a lifetime. We at Washburn know that you are prepared. We know that our faculty have brought you forward today to receive this credential, which certifies that you are prepared. Your education, your knowledge must grow and continue to grow at an even more dizzy pace. You have the skills, you have the talent to succeed. You can do all of this in a world with changes. You can do all this in a world where the change, the pace of change is accelerating every day. I urge you to embrace the concept of lifelong learning. None of us can slow down the technological process, nor would we want to. The only adequate response that we can have in response to the technological changes is that we will adapt ourselves. We have the ability to do that. We know what it is like to live in a world that is changing. We want you as Washburn graduates to be on the forefront of that wave of technology and of change. And you do it with education. Don't ever stop. Congratulations on your pause today. Welcome as graduates of Washburn University. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Paul Hofer, Vice Chair of Washburn University Board of Regents, will confer the honorary degree to Dale Pond. Regents Need will please escort Dale Pond to the center stage for the conferring of the honorary Doctorate of Commerce. We invite everyone to turn to page 44 of your program to read about Dr. Pond's accomplishments. Be it known that inasmuch as an honorary degree was awarded to, is awarded to men and women who, because of scholarly contributions, meritorious public service, or other noteworthy achievements, have come into high universal regard. The Board of Regents of Washburn University does therefore confer upon Dale Pond the degree Doctorate of Commerce with all of the rights, privileges, and insignia pertaining thereto. In testimony whereof, this diploma is issued with the signatures of the President and the Chair of the Board of Regents and the seal of the university affixed at Topeka, Kansas on this 12th day of May, 2018. Dale Pond, for your leadership, your support of higher education, and your dedication to helping others, Washburn University honors you and itself by conferring upon you this honorary degree in token thereof, I cause you to be vested with the appropriate academic hood and grant you this diploma. The road to graduation from Washburn University should offer students more than the completion of an array of courses that is then rewarded with a diploma. Graduates should be given the opportunity to be transformed by their Washburn experience. The goal of a higher education institution is not to turn out graduates, but to graduate students who turn out to be highly principled citizens who make a difference in our society. 
Students pursuing an undergraduate degree have the opportunity to participate in up to four different transformational experiences before graduation. These Washburn transformational experiences are described on page six of your program. Today, we would like to recognize those students who have completed one or more WTE experiences by asking them to stand. Would any student who participated in a transformational experience please stand at this time? Thank you. You may be seated. Washburn transformational experiences are really a hallmark of Washburn and they are unique to our educational experience and we believe they create opportunities that can really transform our students and the people that they are with on their transformational experiences. We're very excited that that many students took advantage of that opportunity. We are very pleased to have students representing the following countries and graduating with degrees from Washburn University at this ceremony. Would our international students please stand and remain standing as your country is mentioned? China, Japan, Nepal, and Saudi Arabia. You may be seated. Dr. Farley will now introduce the Siberson Award finalists and recipient for the School of Business and the finalist and recipient for the School of Nursing Spring 2018 graduating class. Thanks to a very, very generous gift to Washburn University by Erna and Gretchen Siberson, an award has been established to honor the most deserving students selected from among the highest ranking members of the senior class in the undergraduate programs from their respective schools. Based upon academic performance, one student has been selected as a Siberson Award finalist from the School of Business. And two students have been selected as Siverson Award finalists from the School of Nursing. The three finalists and their accomplishments are listed in your program beginning on page 45. I ask each finalist to please stand as your name is called and please remain standing until all of you have been introduced. First, from the School of Nursing, Bailey Hockett. Bailey is graduating with a Bachelor of Business, Ad Business Administration in Marketing and Management. Isabella Fenton. Isabella is graduating with a... <laughs> Isabella is voted most favorite student in her class. No. Isabel Isabella is graduating with a Baccalaureate of Science in Nursing. Chastity Smith. Chastity is also a graduate and Miss Congeniality uh, with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. To these students and their families and friends, we extend our congratulations on your outstanding academic achievements. Please take your seats. The Siberson Award Committee recently met to review the credentials of these finalists and to select a recipient. Bailey Hockett, would you please come forward? <laughs> Bailey is graduating with a Bachelor of Business Administration in Marketing and Management. In August, she will become a law student at the University of... Uh, Kansas. <laughs> she plans to pursue international law or become a criminal prosecutor. Bailey is a member of Phi Kappa Phi Honor Society, Gamma Sigma Alpha Honor Society, who's who among students in America's universities and colleges, the President's Honor Roll, and recognition of academic success in the Greek community. For her leadership, W. TE project, she worked with the Kansas Department for Children and Families. 
For her international WTE, she worked with students from China and Belgium. Bailey, for your outstanding academic achievements, Washburn University is proud and honored to present you the School of Business Spring Siberson Award. Congratulations. From the School of Nursing, Chastity Smith. Please come forward. Chastity is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. She plans to work in the emergency department and continue her education at Washburn University in the fall by pursuing her Doctorate of Nursing practice degree with an emphasis in family practice. She has a passion for patient education in the vulnerable population, including the socioeconomic ally, disaster, and elderly and disadvantage. Chastity is a member of Sigma Theta Tau Nursing Honor Society and received the White School Scholarship in Nursing. She enjoyed her community outreach in the Washburn University Wellness Center and Topeka Rescue Mission. Chastity also served as a mentor for fellow nursing student peers in the mentorship program which is designed to provide new nurses, students with wisdom and support of upper class persons. She, is a she will be graduating summa cum laude, Latin honors. Chastity, for your outstanding academic achievements, Washburn University is proud and honored to present you the School of Nursing Spring 2018 Siberson Award. Congratulations. To honor these Siberson finalists as well as all our graduates, we have a special presentation of a musical piece that was created specifically for our 150th anniversary celebration. It's titled Ichabods and All We Do. The lyrics to this piece were written by alumna Phyllis Hoffman and can be found on the inside cover of your program. Thank you again, Dr. Kellum and the Washburn Singers.
We shall now proceed to the conferring of degrees. We ask that parents, relatives, and friends use the area in front to the right of the stage designated for taking photographs, so not to obstruct the graduates or the professional photographers. Candidates for these degrees will be presented by their academic dean. Will the candidates for, the master, for a master's or doctoral degree please rise? <laughs> President Farley, those before you and in absentia are candidates for a master's or doctoral degree. I am pleased to present to you now for the conferring of their degree those who have completed the requirements and have been recommended by the faculty. On behalf of the Washburn Board of Regents, and by virtue of their vesting in me the ability to award these degrees, I hereby confer upon those who have completed the requirements the appropriate degree with all of the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Please be seated. The marshals will come and bring you forward at the appropriate time. President Farley, I present to you the candidates for the Doctor of Nursing Practice and the Master of Science in Nursing degrees. Thank you, Dean Schabmeyer. Please come forward. Tracy L. Hoffman. <laughs> Masters of Science in Nursing, Melissa Rayland Carter. Tammy Newberry. Mara Sipe. Well, let's give our doctoral and master students a round of applause. Thank you. President Farley, I present to you the candidates for the Master of Accountancy and Master of Business Administration degrees. Please come forward.
Master of Accountancy, Kelly Renee Schunk, summa cum laude, School of Business Scholar. Sha Wan Wang. Austin Nicholas Ward. <laughs> Master of Business Administration, Devraj Adahakari. Kyle Christopher Beck. <laughs> William C. Doster. <laughs> Nicholas James Gitto. Blake W. Cottrell. <clears throat> Sushil Panta. Sarah Sagard Paulson. <laughs> Teresa Scott. Angela Jean Stevens. Duncan Miano Turi. John Turner. Matthew J. Wybie. Let's give our master students a round of applause. The master's degree represents more than 30 academic credit hours of advanced study beyond a bachelor's degree. We are preparing to award three master's degrees and two doctoral degrees today from the School of Nursing and 20 master's degrees from the School of Business. Please, let's give our master's students a round of applause in recognition of this special level of accomplishment. Will all candidates for a bachelor degree please rise?
President Farley, those before you and in absentia are candidates for a bachelor degree. I am pleased to present to you now for the conferring of their degree those who have completed the requirements and have been recommended by the faculty. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of Washburn University, I hereby confer upon those who have completed the requirements to receive the appropriate degree with all the rights, honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Please be seated. President Farley, I present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Business Administration degree. Please come forward as directed by the marshals. Bachelor of Business Administration, Benjamin Levi Albertson, Magna Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. <laughs> Mohammed Saleb Al Madani. <laughs> Michaela Dawn Baldwin. Muhammad Hamad Al Adhabi. Austin Wayne Basso. Megan E. Bitter, cum laude. Mariella Angelita Barrigo. Cody Scott Boss. Matthew Wayne Burns, magna cum laude, School of Business Scholar. Andrew Robert Carpenter. Karen Corral. Jackson Davis. Neil Thomas Dickinson. Connor Ross England, School of Business Scholar. <laughs> Tomasa Espino, Lindsay Bonner Scholar. Brock Logan Falley, magna cum laude. Nicole A. Fangman, summa cum laude. Nicholas Austin Frederick. Luke Ryan Garrett. Adam Michael Gehring. Jacob Tyler Grand Prix. Anthony Marlon Green. Trenton Charles Green. Trevor J. Groundwater, Magna Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. Isaac J. Han, Cum Laude. Connor Robert Hess. Joshua William Hess, Cum Laude.
Bailey R. Hockett, Sibison Finalist, Summa Cum Laude, University Honours, Honours Associate, School of Business Scholar. Dalton Lacey Holmes, Magna Cum Laude. Ling Huang, Magna Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. Mm -hmm. Caitlin L. Hubble, Cum Laude. Thomas Joseph Hupe. Ariel S. Jones. Cameron Luke Junke, Magnum Cum Laude School of Business Scholar. Rose Bernadette Klaske, Summa Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. Mickey Kubota. Zachary Connor Linquist, Cum Laude. Michael Caleb Malazzo, Magna Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. Savannah M. Moore. Kazuwake Nawai. Kaylee J. Newell. Thomas Everett Noble. Tyler John Richard Palmer, Summa Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. Lupan, Summa Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. Bailey Alexander Pankratz, Cum Laude. Krista Ann Ravel. Matthew David Seymour. <laughs> Haley Star Shirley, Cum Laude, Lindsay Bonner Scholar. <laughs> Brady William Skeens, Magnum Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. <laughs> Jacob Alexander Struber. Kenton Grant Tegatoff. <laughs> Shannon Brooke Tibbetts. <laughs> Michael Andrew Tilton. Reed Thomas Treese, Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. Shuang Wang, Summa Cum Laude, School of Business Scholar. Hunter Pierce Weidenbaker.
President Farley, I present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree. Thank you, Dean. Please come forward as directed by the marshals. Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Ryan Daniel Artzer. Morgan Lee Athan, magna cum laude. Chase Allen Bauer, cum laude. Hannah Christina Baumert, cum laude. Faith Joe Bunnell. Rhiannon Bowser. Sydney Page Brown, cum laude. Megan Lorene Callahan. Allie Carlton. <laughs> Cynthia Gabarella Castro Garay, cum laude. Sarah Michelle Cook. Claire Cooney. Catherine Brooke Conley, cum laude. Dira Earhart, magna cum laude, School of Nursing Honors. Avey. Hannah Avey, magna cum laude. Juliet Fehrenbacher. <laughs> Isabella Marie Fenton, summa cum laude, School of Nursing Honors, Siverson nominee. <laughs> Angelique Elaine Flynn, cum laude, School of Nursing Honors, Link Bonner Scholar. Ashley Dillon Garrity, magna cum laude, School of Nursing Scholar. Trista Gish. Megan Luann Griffiths, cum laude. Faith Rochelle Hadley. Fallon B. Handley. Becky Jane Harmon. Elijah Hans Harvey. Connor Marie Hayes. 
Samantha Herring. Rebecca Hill, cum laude. Tanner Hinderleiter. James Hishma. Christina Nicole Hunt. Jonathan Michael Irwin, cum laude. Hunter Key. Haley Lene Kelly. Cheyenne Kearns, magna cum laude. Dana Marie Kramer. Allison Kozachuk, magna cum laude, School of Nursing Scholar. Catherine La Liberty. thank you. Peter Latondres. Kara Marie Lichtai. Mallory Anna Leertz. Elizabeth Marie Lockhart. Megan Elizabeth Lund. Doralyn J. Mellinger, cum laude. Caitlin Minnick, summa cum laude, School of Nursing Scholar. Haley Ohm. Catherine A. Orm. Ashlyn Marie Osborne. Katherine Polinski, cum laude. Garrett Allen Pepper, cum laude. Christina Pickering. Chelsea Ray Potter, cum laude. <laughs> Tracy M. Reeser. Gabriella Marie Rodriguez. Carly Romine. Madeline Ruthier. Frank Sales. Kylie Sherber. Bailey Rose Smith, magna cum laude.
Taylor Smith. Kenton Mark Shu, summa cum laude. Ashley Marie Smith, cum laude. Chastity Shanae Smith, summa cum laude, School of Nursing Scholar, Siberson finalist. Tori Snavely, cum laude. Carlin Spear, cum laude. Emily Ann Springer, cum laude. Brandy Rose Stahl, cum laude. Brittany Thurston. Tyler Tunnel. Courtney Wallace, School of Nursing Honors. Presley Wiggins, magna cum laude, School of Nursing Scholar. We are proud to welcome 73 bachelor degree graduates from the School of Business and 82 bachelor degree graduates from the School of Nursing as new alumni. Please let's give our baccalaureate students another round of applause. Before concluding the ceremony, graduates, I would like to underscore that this is a moment of transition. You entered Lee Arena as the final step in completing your requirements for your degree. As you leave today, you begin your exciting future by joining thousands of proud Washburn University alumni. In that regard, it is now my pleasure to introduce Mike Mustaine, President of the Washburn University Alumni Association Board of Directors. Thank you, Dr. Mazacek, President Farley, on behalf of more than 44,000 living Washburn alumni, I congratulate you on your graduation from Washburn University. You're joining the ranks of alumni from across the nation who all have the same thing in common, we're all Ichabods. Like them, you developed a permanent and lasting relationship with Washburn. As such, your continued involvement will help shape Washburn for the generations of Ichabods who will follow in your footsteps. Throughout the rest of your life, the Alumni Association will keep you connected to Washburn University and your classmates. Today, our graduation gift to you is a complimentary one-year membership in the Alumni Association. Simply claim it and it's yours. Membership information is outlined on the postcard on your chair. For those of you in the stands, family and friends, you're welcome to join the Alumni Association. You do not have to be a graduate to join. 
Being a member of the Alumni Association is all the fun of college without the homework and tests. No homework, no test, and it's free. Don't be afraid to get involved and be a part of the fun. Your fellow Ichabod alumni will welcome you with open arms. Keep in mind, the university's reputation is built on the success of its graduates. We know you'll go on to do great things and make us proud. On this day of graduation, we wish you happiness, good health, and prosperity. Congratulations, Ichabods. Will all graduates please rise and remain standing. I need you to make sure that your tassel is on the right side. Okay, congratulations graduates. As a symbol of your great achievement, please move your tassel to the left side of your mortarboard to indicate your new status as alumni. We conclude the spring 2018 commencement with the singing of the alma mater, located on the inside cover of your program. Members of the Washburn Singers will sing this. Please remain standing for the recessional. Graduates, family, and friends, we at Washburn wish you the very best in your future. Go Bods! Thank you. 